Welcome everyone to another Learn, Grow, Invest video. My name is Jeremy and I'm the co-founder for this community. Today we have the awesome privilege to speak to the CEO of Productive Bins Business Solutions. So there, there is actually a preference share offer out right now that we're going to be speaking to them about. So we're very excited about it. So, you know, I can't wait to get started. We're going to do the usual, though, go through the intros and, and all that. So Learning is the key to successful investing. And who doesn't want to invest in some way? Here at Learn Grow Invest, we focus on financial education, all with the aim of sharing our knowledge on personal finance, investing and building wealth. We do this on the foundation of our faith in God. If a more holistic approach is what you need, check out our Grow Faith-Based Financial Coaching Program. Find out more about us at learngrowinvestclub.com and follow us on all social media platforms at Learn, Grow, Invest. All right, welcome again. Let me know where you're joining from today. We have some, some great questions for, for Pedro, who's going to be joining us shortly. So what we've done, if, you, if, if this is your first time here, we typically go through the details of an offer first. So we have that, that prospectus review that was released on yesterday. So if you missed it, be, be sure to watch that video directly after this one. What, what we did in that video was go through the details of the offer, explain what the offer is, how you can apply. Usually we go over things like the use of proceeds. We go over the financials for the company, everything that you'll need to know to make an informed decision. And now what we're gonna do today is give you the chance to hear from the CEO, Pedro himself. So. This is your chance to ask your questions, get any information that you might not have gotten from the review. So I know we've, we've gotten some questions already, but if they come up as we go, feel free to post them in the chat. So let's bring on Pedro. Pedro, Good welcome. Good evening, Jermaine. Happy to be here. Happy to have you as well. So, uh, before we get started, just in case there are some persons who may not have heard about PBS before, can you tell us a little bit about the company, the background, you know, how long you've been in operations and so on? How long do I, how, how much time do I have? You have all the but, time in the world. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, PBS uh, became a public company in 2017. We entered the market at 55 cents of a dollar. And uh, back then, the EBITDA was 13 million. And um, now, um, in 2022, um, our EBITDA for first half, which we published the results yesterday, reached 21.6 million. And nice. the price of the ordinary shares is has rounded between $1 and, and, one, and one twenty. And our market cap has been um, moving between 166 million and 200 million. And if you, they don't know what PBS is, we are, um, as I said in a prior interview, we are a quiet giant. We are in 19 countries. We employ 2,000 people and we represent the best of the brands in the technology world, which make me very privileged to do what I do. I love my work. And um, we are in this project of perpetual preference, redeemable um, uh, shares that um, it's um, a very interesting opportunity for us and for the investors. Okay, so I, I, I'm definitely going to ask you a little bit more about the, the, the decision for a preference share as opposed to different forms of raising money shortly. But, you know, one of the, the first things I wanted to ask you is, you know, can you, so your, your, your prospector speaks about uh, some, some very high level statements in terms of the use of proceeds can you tell us maybe in in a little bit more detail why you're raising this money well you know we always have a strategic growth opportunities and um, as an example is of little known but we work with the largest 
shipping company in the world where in a port we have deployed scanners for containers coming in and coming out to a point that we scan more than 18,000 containers on a contract with a tenure of uh, 10 years and they pay a click for uh, per, per scan and these type of projects are needed of heavy capex in and in these initiatives we for growth organic growth we need proceeds as such as the one that we are discussing of course the company is always pursuing reviewing strategic or inorganic opportunities in the past two years we have made two we acquired a company in salva prior to COVID, and then we acquired um, pbs technologies formerly massey technologies yes. In yes okay so um so based on that and that really brings me to my next question why a preference share versus other ways that you could possibly raise money maybe you know making available more ordinary shares maybe like what what goes into choosing a preference share as opposed to the other forms of raising money well as you can imagine we don't want to dilute ordinary shares on the market and people is close is holding tightly to their shares of the company <laughs> as you can imagine and um, this vehicle allow us to provide us the um, the rapid the rapidness that we need to execute in certain initiatives that we are evaluating at this time. Okay, and 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 you're confident that you'll be able to raise the amount you need through this offer. Well, I'm I'm always a I'm a confident person. I'm always a positive person. As you can imagine that um, we do a lot of things all over. We do a lot of types of projects. And uh, my, my personal um, view is that uh, we're going to succeed in this capital race. And um, that this is um, going to be good for investors and it's going to be likewise good as well for the company okay okay all right so let us talk a little bit about so so one of the things we did yesterday was go through we did a company overview we looked at some of the things that you offer in terms of products services and one of the areas that were mentioned i'm actually trying to bring it up here so let me share my screen quickly you have this image of in in the prospectus of like a revenue breakdown, right? And and it speaks to how your revenue comes in. Can you speak to maybe any any opportunities for growth in any country that you that you currently operate in, or just anything that would help us, you know, understand what we're what we're looking at in terms of this image? Thank you for the question. This is in the prospectus. Yes. And I'm going to put one example that exemplifies the opportunities that PBS has. In the past six months, we have been working with the government of El Salvador. And they have a massive transformation in the public education. We participate in, in several initiatives that they have that started in 2021. The government of Salvador bought more than 700,000 pieces for the education system. We provide the services for most all of them that in 2021 they were recorded those those services the evolution of that was an expansion of the project in 2022 pbs won 50,000 devices as well as as the in the devices we represent google classroom and the government selected Google and Google selected us. As, as a result, we landed a three year contract to provide Google Classroom to the education system in Salvador. 
And as well, uh, we also represent a leading brand in the world for, as you can imagine, if you get, you give computers to kids, you want to know where the computers are. And uh, we are providing the geolocalization system for the computers. And we are in, 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 in talks to provide the on warranty support for, in this case, for Dell and the interactions between the students and the teachers and the institution in another project that will further expand our reach providing the ongoing services. This in, in its totality is a project of $30 million that is this year in, in, in our numbers and that in itself explain just in one minister of education after COVID, the need for them to use different means to further improve the education of a country. And they're yeah. counting with PBS for that. Okay, and this 30 million, you're speaking in, in, in US dollars, right? Um, yeah, I'm, 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 a, I'm a US dollar guy. <laughs> okay, good, good, good. Okay. No, you, but, but, but you know, that now that you ask the question, it's, it's important to clarify, although it's in the prospectus, 41% of the revenues of the company are in US dollars. 9% are in Jamaican dollars. Yes, and I know. 1% are coming from uh, of, of mm -hmm. other countries. So mm -hmm. the, the balance of the stream of revenues is very interesting for the investors. Yeah, yeah. Think so as well. Uh, let me. There's a slide that I had here. So, um, in terms of the opportunities that you see for growth, so you also have a revenue by product line, and I, I noted that you know for IT and printing, those represent really your largest you know buckets in terms of revenue. Uh, do you see, can you, can you speak to us about the two major ones here? So, so IT, what does that comprise of for you and printing, what does that comprise of for you? Well, IT is related to our sales operations around the brands Dell, Lenovo, HP, NCR. And um, those are very important for us in the networking it's everything around brands like cisco fortinet aruba that we represent in the maintenance i think is my favorite um, part of it because maintenance is related to everything that we sell and after we install it we'll generate a revenue stream month by month and for me, those are, um, that's the beauty of, of the company, that uh, we can provide further support to things that still require prof professionals to attend yeah. their systems. In the printing world, that much has been said about, about it, that you, you, you heard people saying no paper, no paper, but Long, long story short is that more than 110 million of pages uh, wow. go, go through our 31,000 machines that we have installed in the, in the countries. And printing is only one part of it. We do a lot of digitalization projects, very important. We are, we are doing the digitalization for Bank of Jamaica as an example. Yes. And, um, the National um, Insurance Bureau for Trinidad and Tobago, another big project. And we are competing in a tender with the World Bank in Costa Rica in the transformation for their IRS. And uh, we have the best proposal that is worth around $5 million. So our printing, we, we, we refer as it as, a, as an image, whether it is electronic image, or whether it's a printing page or whether it's a label. So it's very broad and um, that's um, 
a, an opportunity to, for us. And it, um, need, needless to say that it was the most affected division in COVID times. Ah, okay, 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 understood. So there was there's one area, uh, thank you for that, by the way. Um, there's one area, this advanced services area. Now, when I see advanced, I'm thinking maybe these are, may, can you share a little bit about these services? Because, you know, the mind can go all over in terms of advanced. Is this advanced in terms of IT, like, you know, cyber security type stuff? Or, you know, is it like? Well, as, as you can imagine, advanced is really um, an area of our business which requires a more unique technical skill. As, a, as an example, a client has on-premise um, computing solutions and they decide to go hybrid into the cloud and put some of their systems in cloud-based systems and their local uh, on-premise. So we have migrated clients to hybrid models. As such, we have migrated clients from all their versions of the best database that exists in the world, which is Oracle. And these are critical uh, systems that, uh, as an example, they were, they were in version 11, and then the current version is 18. So as a result, we have to have very good people, profoundly trained. And, and another example that for me is um, of high note. Recently, Costa Rica, the governor of Costa Rica was attacked by um, uh, ransomware uh, virus, and, uh, and it was a, a subject of a cyber attack. So in this case, in the social security, that is a very important institution. You, you know that Costa Rica ranks 20 five in the world in social security. And uh, the entity was very hardly uh, affected. And ultimately, to the, they decided to upgrade their strategic databases to an encrypted version of an Oracle uh, version. So uh, for me, uh, advanced services, everything related to, to that, managed services, help desks, um, interfaces where we connect institutions using uh, means like middleware. And that alone um, is further complemented with um, programming of applications one-on-one. -on -one. And um, that's why we call it uh, advanced services. It was born on a acquisition of a company, it's called Hitech. Uh, and, um, yeah. and that's why uh, we, we created this business line. Okay, great. So, so that actually that 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 that. So one of the things I wanted to ask you there was there was mention of of a potential um, acquisition. So it seems to be that uh, one of the strategies you may use is if if you see a company that provides a service or 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 has a product that may be valuable to you, you may seek to to you know, acquire that company so it becomes a part of the portfolio and now you can offer this service to, to your customers. Is that something that you seek to do aggressively or it's just really, you know, depends on the need that is there at the time? We evaluate our capabilities. What can we do organically and what is best for us if there is an opportunity to further enhance our portfolio? What time and investment it will take us to reach a level of maturity in a competitive way in certain markets or if or inorganically we can get there faster in a, in an affordable way and maximize on our platform of economies of scale so the answer is we are evaluating uh, opportunities constantly that may or may not happen and um, we we think that uh, we have identified 
some opportunities that will be extremely attractive for clients, for stakeholders, and investors. Great, great. I, I'm, I'm so curious, but I figure that you can't get into the details right now. So we, well, let me, we'll, uh, the only thing that I can tell you is that we, we are going to be uh, a, a much powerful company than the one that that you see today, um, better configured, and 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 that alone um, mm. is super interesting for for yes, me yes, because indeed. i see my baby growth by the day yes yes agreed there all right so you have this line item so so we're we're going to take uh our, our our conversation to to your your five-year financials now so sure. you we we saw and i'm trying to bring it up on screen here so you had um well, based on the, on on the prospectus, your best year in 2021, and yes. you actually have projections of exceeding that for 2022. We'll get to the projections in a little bit, but um, can you you know speak to us about the revenue growth that you've had over the last few years? What do you attribute most of that growth to? And in terms of um, net profits, you you're you're also projecting 10 million in net profit for 2022. Can you talk to us about those those two two key points? Sure. 2017, as I described to you, was the year that we came uh, and became a public company. And when you are in the process of issuing um, or becoming a publicly traded company, you incur in a lot of um, in a lot of costs. And um, in this case, we were at um, 171 million and our EBITDA, as you can see, 15, and we were at the loss of 4.7. Yes. In 2018, we have a an interesting growth in, 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 in EBITDA and um, we went from 15 to 20. This uh, is when we started to, to, to see that diversification in acquiring other business lines and we make it to break even which for us was a huge accomplishment in 2019 uh, at 100 million we um, reached 24 million dollars of EBITDA and um, we did two millions PAT and and and, and for that for us was a, a, a tipping point. But then COVID came. And I was, a, I'm always a, an advocate reader of, um, of the market. And one of the things that I read was what type of damage COVID had in your operation. There was something that was called mild, which is uh, losing of revenue of 20%. And I think we are in that bracket when we went from 180 to 161. Mm -hmm. And the other part of the study said it, the loss of revenue will continue in further years, then you're going to be in huge trouble. And as you can see, we went from 180 to 160 to 223, yes. which is remarkable. It and is. this is a, a, a collective effort of, of my teams in the countries and, of course, the support of a lot of, um, of the players in, in the mergers and acquisitions teams that we have in the company, our 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 support that we receive from our Miami office, our Jamaican um, investment bankers is huge. And in 2020, uh, we acquired Massive Technologies and that company was separate from us 
And it was until August of 2021, 30 of August, that we uh, integrated it into PBS. So yeah. what, what you see here is four months of, of Masi, and in addition, the transformation post-COVID of PBS. You also can see that um, in spite of, uh, of um, where we were, we were at $47 million of expenses. Then we dropped to 41. And after we acquired Massive, we went back to $47 million of expenses. So that's a, a, an, a big effort on my team without um, touching our capital base and to make the company more efficient that we ended up with um, $32 million of EBITDA and $5.5 million of PAT. So um, we are positioned to, to grow. And um, just today, we published our results in the stock exchange of- Yes, yes, I noted that. We, we presented the interim report and, and by memory, we were at $153 million of revenue, $21.6 million of EBITDA, and at $2.4 million of PAT. And um, we have a um, surprise in FX in certain markets. And um, as, you, as you, you remember, in, in Jamaica, the, the, the Jamaican dollar revaluated, and uh, when, when in our numbers, that's a, that's a loss. And, and, and that wasn't planned. And right now it's at 152 plus average. And um, that's where um, we didn't anticipate otherwise the results would have been a little bit better. Okay, okay. So can you speak to know your, your projections? Uh, what you have here is, you know, a projection to end the year at about 300 million. And what would be net profit of 10 million US dollars uh, based on where you are at this point in, in financial year? Do, do these projections still hold? Are you anticipating maybe to even exceed these projections? How, how are things shaping up there? As a public company, I always have to be careful of, of yes. not, yes. not, not, not selling my, 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 my soul, right? So <laughs> what I can tell you is that um, at 153 and uh, 2.4 half uh, of the year, we see that uh, we have a good momentum. That's important. We have momentum and we have opportunities that are unique. And I think that um, as a director of the company, as a shareholder and as a CEO of the company, I'm optimistic of our chances to, to grow uh, PBS in the months to come. Okay, okay. All right, there are a few things that we wanted to know from the balance sheet perspective. Sure. So two things stood out to us. You had a growth in your accounts receivable to 83 million up from 51 million the, the year before. What is the health of your accounts receivable now is do you normally make provisions for a certain amount of 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 it to be written off each year? Can you can you talk to us about that? How how that is normally managed? Account receivable is one of my favorite topics, as you can imagine. It's <laughs> something that I um, am personally involved. And in the last three years, we created provisions for around. $800,000, when you compare $800,000 to our revenue is significantly low. Although it's a number that I don't want to see, I always want to improve the company. On another note, we went from, in, the, in December of last year, we had $53 million. And uh, in, in, in June, we ended up at $71 million. But you have to be mindful that we're selling more, and in other, in another uh, contributor to it is that 
the acquisition of Massey, as an example, give us $24 million of incremental revenue in the period of the first six months of 2022. So that and the strategic projects where we are um, show an increase on our AR. On another note, our biggest segment of revenue streams are the governments of the different countries where we operate. And we are very proud that although in a country like Panama, where we have 65 clients coming from the government, you have to complete at least 10 steps to go and collect. So that's a 650 actions. So in this case, and I mentioned the government of Panama, because this is an area that we have to be constantly monitoring yes. in order to ensure that our collections there, which are the biggest, because it's one of the biggest customer, are executed. So I feel that um, our collections are always a, an opportunity. As a matter of fact, I will be visiting a country uh, on Monday where we I'm, I'm going to put my helmet of collector. I, I, I don't see I'm going to get a bike, but at least they're going to take me to, to these clients and give them a motivational speech that why they should pay us. Okay, okay, interesting, interesting. All right, there's also another item that we saw that um, it, you had a growth in your intangible assets from 20 million to 104 million. Was that maybe some specialized software that you invested in? Can you speak to us about that? that no, this is, the, this is uh, related to the acquisition of PBS technologies. Okay, okay. Completely uh, attributable to the PBS technology uh, intangible asset. Okay, okay, great. And finally, one of the things we wanted to ask you from the balance sheet perspective, so your retained earnings uh, currently sit at negative 2.6 million. Of course, there was a question that was asked by our, our, our community member, if, if you are confident that you'll be able to generate enough cash to pay your dividends consistently, is this something that you, you, you can address for us? No, this is definitely, I mean, we, we, when we became public, I don't know if you know, but we have um, preference shares and we yes. have bonds. And um, in COVID, we never missed one payment. Yeah. And, and that is very important. And now that we are in this project, we are always mindful of other people's money and our responsibility, our fiduciary responsibility with our employees, with our clients, with our agencies, and of course, with our investors. So when okay. we are going to put $1 there is because we're going to get many, many dollars back in return. OK, OK. All right, great. I'm, I'm sure the person who asked that question is, is happy to hear that. Uh, so what are your plans for growing the company? So outside of the, the, the high level areas that you spoke about in terms of use for the proceeds, where do you see PBS in maybe, you know, three to five years? PBS has an opportunity to improve their operations. I was the other day in a meeting with the chairman and he described PBS as a work in progress. It's always an opportunity for us to go and do things and find areas that are improvable. And, and, and that's my, my permanent quest in this uh, regard. If I'm able to convince my managers that a project that was created in one country can be done in another country, then PBS will have immense opportunities to scale up. 
as an example. The project that I just described to you in Salvador, in a meeting that we had, the managers of three countries, in this case, the manager of Barbados, the manager of Curaçao, and the manager of Costa Rica, they took note of this amazing project. And as a result, our, ourselves, our Google, are, are working to create national transformation um, projects for the education. And, 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 and as you can imagine, we have 20 countries. We're talking about four. And imagine if we are talking about 12 more that we can reach. This will be completely transformational because Google is very a great partner and they they find in PBS one single point of contact and that's why they like the most of us and our corporate governance and um, this is related to to one project another example uh, of, 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 of things that that we do we work in a, the largest supermarket chain in the world we are their their one one important uh, service provider and as such we do level two support we have 200 people working for them and around that is cheaper to buy from pds for because of the post sale that we provide because we're already going into their stores they have 950 stores in the region so this is um we can replicate this in other similar retailers this is a huge area of opportunity and last we have a bank that is a public bank where we want a master contract supply for oracle licenses and in in in, in this institution uh, we have done around 25 projects and the last one that they uh, acquire from us is the, you know, that in, in, in every institution, the most important asset are, are the people. And uh, in this case, they have 5,000 employees and uh, they commanded us to implement the Oracle human, human capital management platform to execute a project from for all the employees when they go in their evolution their career their evaluation and and all the from from day one to the last everything related to to the person and we are we have been selected to do that in in this and in perhaps in another inst large institution soon and in a very large telco, and we're going to use our own cooking. That's the software that we're going to use. You know, the group of companies that we are part of have around 5,000 to 7,000 employees. So that's why um, sometimes uh, we work with our cousins. Okay, interesting. I, I, I really, I mean, there, and I'm sure there are so many other things that you haven't mentioned because you have so many lines of business and products that 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 you. That yeah, but I, I just mentioned a few that I'm very passionate. Yeah. In, in the in the in the interim report, you see, as as I as I'm describing to you, imagine you have a police officer that needs to talk to a citizen, and and imagine how thorough will be the process when they have a body-worn camera. So yeah. they have to apply the right to use of force. And the uh, citizens also has to behave correctly because all of that is recorded. So we are doing that as an example in the, in the island of Barbados. And this is just a phase one of a police, um, of a police project. So uh, again, if we can replicate this project here yeah, and there and there and there. Yeah. Uh, and that's 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 our job now if you ask me where we are now where would i like to be i'd like pbs to be about four hundred thousand dollars of revenue uh soon and that's um our aim 
Okay. Okay. Interesting. So we'll we'll be looking out for that. We'll once once we typically review a company here, we'll do updates in the future. So we'll definitely be going through those future reports to see just how the company is 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 going to grow. So I look forward to, to reviewing that, and hopefully you can join us again. Well, at, you know, uh, when I'm going for an interview, I always want to have a good time. So I want to have a good story to tell. So great, you better believe it. Great, great, awesome. All right, so I just have two more questions for you here, and then we'll see uh, what, what what our our audience has to ask. So, do you have so based on the plans that you have and and how you see PBS growing in the next three to five years, are you likely or do you have any plans to raise any more capital in the future? For the moment, no. Okay. We don't we don't have plans in the moment to to raise more than what is uh, presented in these um, issuance. Okay, okay. And the final question for now, well, at least for, from my side, usually we ask CEOs to say to us, who, who do they see their company being ideal for in terms of an investor? So when, 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 when you ask an investor to maybe think about PBS as a company, maybe what areas or what's the story, as, as, as you put it, that, that, that you'd like them to know about PBS. And that's, and that's before we get to you know, the details of the offer, you know, how to apply. We'll have Doyle from JMB joining us shortly. So what, who would you say PBS is ideal for in terms of an, an investor? Well, this, this, this project of perpetual preference, redeemable, cumulative shares is for people that is looking for steady incomes. You have some money that perhaps is in not yielding so much and you would like uh, to have a interesting low risk permanent uh, quarterly income for the next 15 years, mm -hmm. that's a good fit for this segment of, of, of individuals. If yeah. you have the stomach for, for risk and you're looking for value and you always want to be in behind the news, then you have the stomach, then that's another type of people so uh, the, this is um depending on the on the appetite of the investor okay. we are on the safe side of the of the investment okay okay I, I, that, I really i really love that explanation uh thank you for that so let's let's bring on doyle from well let's see if, if there are any questions for you first let me just do a scan of our chat uh so we have persons joining from 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 Guyana, from Miami, from Colombia, from Portmore, from Honduras. So I'm taking it, it that some of these persons are probably members of the PBS team joining us as well. So welcome everyone. Um, so let me see. Well, Carl had had asked about the lines of businesses. I think we touched on that. Carl, let me know if you're still unclear. We can we can maybe go through it again. I'm just I can, going. I can okay. um, I can um, share my screen and explain really quick the line of businesses. Okay, sure. How we are divided. So let me do it really, really quick. Sure. Let me see. Okay. There you go. These are the line of businesses, and um, we talk about the professional services. The communication that has everything to do with networking, switching, collaboration, and cybersecurity. We explain at length our printing and imaging. We also cover our advanced services where we work with the likes like Oracle, VMware, and Red Hat. Our information technology is related to, is as, as it says, to, to Lenovo, Dell, HP, NCR, we do, we do also some Apple business. 
and our security systems that is related um and you and you know because you are in jamaica pbs with a consortium won the national id as well as in in in, in barbados and we are doing some projects similar in in, in guatemala and and Leidos and tales in in this case tales give us um the cards polycarbon cards with chips and uh, also they produce um, what is going to be a new wave of um, for travel at the checkpoints and Leidos, which is an American company. They are the one of the biggest providers for TSA in um, in equipment and um, these um, two brands are going to be very relevant for us in the transformation of the airports in the region. So I hope that with, with this um, slide, uh, people can understand how PBS is dissected and how we are focused and how we cover our vertical um, markets um, in all this, with all these business lines. Great, it, it, this is an excellent slide. Thank you, thank you so much. So. Aline is asking, who is your biggest competitor? And are there any plans to, to acquire small and medium businesses in the same field? Our biggest competitor, um, I think, is ourselves. Because um, when, when we work as a team and we are first and we serve our clients, and we maximize our resources, we do great. Internally, our internal experience is super important to provide good uh, customer experience. But that um, being said, we compete uh, strongly in the printing world in entry level with HP. In mid level, we compete with Rico. Uh, they are our competitors there. Then in the um, in the space of uh, integration, there are companies that are very prominent, like uh, GBM, the IBM uh, exclusive distributor in the region. Fujitsu is also a competitor of ours, and there's a company out of Panama that is called Tecnasa that is. It has the representation of uh, NCR for many, many countries, as well as we have the NCR representation for the Caribbean and Guatemala and the East. So there are a lot of competitors, a company from Costa Rica called El Orbe, that uh, is one of the largest resellers of HP. So internally, we have to keep everybody at bay. And externally, we have to be super watchful and yeah. um, and that's why another day a person asked me what keeps me uh, awake at night uh, is the competition. Okay. So that, that's, that, that's, that's very interesting to me, right? Because, because you do so much and, and you're so diverse, are there any, I mean, this, this makes me think of another question. Are there any product categories or service categories that you lead in? As in, you know, you'd be maybe the, the the largest player in that space that maybe others would be trying to, to come after your business. Is there any such era for you that you have maybe, you know, you're, you're miles ahead in terms of market share? Well, we have more than 60% of market share in production cut sheet nice. uh, printers for, for the graphic cards. We have more than 80% of the ATMs that are sold in the Caribbean. We are the largest Oracle distributor. When you combine our business in the Caribbean and Central America, we are the longest, the largest uh, um, dealer. So yeah. in, in this, in these three areas, uh, we, um, we are very um, important, and um, I'm this is because you're asking me, and it's not lack of humility, okay? Because 
I'm, I'm trying to be very transparent so that people can understand what we do. And, um, but um, we have a, another space where, where, where we, I don't know if you're aware, but we have done um, the ballots for elections in, in certain countries because we have a unique talent and unique equipment. And as such, we have done um, um, implementations of, of projects where we do uh, where, where we do this. So we've done it in Colombia with a client of ours. We've done it in Costa Rica. So definitely we have a, a leading edge there. And the other part is that people really trust us, their problems. And, and, and then they ask for our services. And then we can transform and create unique value propositions to them. So in, in this space of creating solutions um, unique with value propositions, I think we we have a we have a formidable capabilities. Great, great. It, it does sound that way, definitely. Orville is asking if you see any entities on the Jamaica Stock Exchange that you could potentially you know, acquire, is that something you're thinking about maybe? Well, you know, we are the largest uh, technology company, or is it, it's a very well kept secret in the Jamaica Stock Exchange, right? Um, we do not see um, in our acquisition roadmap acting in the JSE. Okay, okay. And I think this is Jermaine. Hopefully, I'm, I'm pronouncing that correctly. He says, "Hi, hi, Pedro. Given the global constraints in terms of getting, you know, items from suppliers, what, what, what's different in terms of what PBS will be doing in making sure they meet customer satisfaction? So, you know, is there anything you know that would limit? I, I know, I, I know some some providers maybe say, you know, they're." challenges in shipping or challenges in maybe getting products across countries is there any such thing that would prevent you from you know keeping your customers happy this is something that is affecting not only pbs is affecting our competitors as well i can only speak about my company and i can tell you that this is a capital issue for for us for me I constantly monitor where we are with deliveries. And I can tell you by memory that uh, we have 3,000 multifunctional printers that our partner Xerox hasn't shipped to us. So in this case, we have to balance um, lending, use machines, uh, moving machines from one country to the other, uh, in order to cope with um, how these uh, probes are going to be delivered to us between now and December. 3,000 machines are a lot. It's 10% of our MIF. Uh, we have more than 550 ATMs that are ordered on, on behalf of our banking clients. And as you can imagine, the level of stress that that caused between now and, and December. Yeah. Other things that um, are relevant is that although sometimes we have to go to a client and really um, with humility ask for extensions, there are other cases where our clients have been lenient to us and we offer one product and they are willing to switch to another pro product. Of course, we have to do the proper certifications that the, project will, the product will stand. And in another case that for me is one of the most beautiful examples is when we can work with a partner and, uh, and a client and we can be precise that if we set one month, even though the crisis that we're in is one month. And when yeah. we say that it's six weeks, it's six weeks. And, and as I can tell you, in the broad world of delivery of our goods, uh, we, we have a, um, a good story as well. The other day, we worked with a bank in a million and a half dollar project of 
PCs, and we were not the cheapest, but we told them that we were going to deliver. They trusted us, and we did. Great. Uh, so, comment here from from Gabriela saying that she's just saying hello from from Guatemala and that this is a great interview. Excellent info being shared. Thank you so much for that. Uh, Natoya is asking, are there any penalties if if she decides to buy and and decide not to hold? And I wonder if that's a question that maybe we should say for Doyle. Um, so let's I, actually- I think Doyle will be really, really good answering this question. Yes, yes, I think so as well. I think it should be a good time to bring on Doyle now. So Doyle, welcome, how are you? Uh, thank you, Jeremy. Okay. All right, so we'll we'll get to the questions about how to apply shortly, but there's a question here from 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 Natoya. Are there any penalties if, if she decides to buy and not hold for the 15 years? Uh, no, there are no penalties. Uh, how this transaction will work is that it will be public publicly listed on the JSE. So therefore, um, anyone that buys into the into the offering will be able to sell the stock units on the market uh, if they decide that you know whether it is 10 years eight years 14 years from now um, they'd like to uh, liquidate their investment or part of their investment they'll be able to put it up for sale on the exchange um, on on the public market effectively okay great and and i noticed there was something as well that was stated in the in the prospectus that if it is let's say so so the, the 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 fact that she raised her holding it for 15 years can you explain what that is about help persons to understand what what what's the relevance of 15 years for this for this particular offer sure absolutely uh so the relevance is this this the offer is to a great extent considered a cumulative renewable perpetual preference share which means that um, there is no maturity date set for the, the preference shares. However, after 15 years, PBS, the company, has the ability to call the shares. So they cannot call the shares before that, even if, for argument's sake, interest rates in Jamaica were to fall to, you know, let's say 4% on a Jamaican dollar scale and 3% on a US dollar scale. I mean, that's, a, that's just an example. They, they could not call the share before effectively 2037. So investors would be able to benefit from the rate of return that the preference shares is providing. Okay. So then, so, and, and one, one thing I noted from the, from the prospectus, at the point that it's being called, there will be in, in terms of the, the funds being repaid, if it is at the market price is higher, that amount will be paid as opposed to the original price. Can you speak about that as well? So it was done to be able to ensure that uh, different shareholders would be able to um, be the benefit um, based on based on the current market. Therefore, the risk would be much much lower for preference shareholders after. And very very important to notice after fifteen years. So that, that really would not be a risk for you know many investors until for a very, very long time. And it wouldn't be a risk at all because it would therefore allow investors to exit whole if the company were to, to call the shares. Okay, okay. All right, and Natoya again with a, with a very good question here. If there are any unforeseen issues and the company is unable to pay dividends, how are shareholders protected? Great question. It's in the, the very, very long title, but the answer is in the long title, in which is cumulative. The cumulative aspect of the preference shares means that if for any reason, let's say for argument's sake, uh, six, seven, eight years from now, we have another unexpected crisis like COVID and the company isn't able to pay dividends for a quarter, um, again, as an example, uh, that quarter rolls forward into the next quarter, so it still is owed. The company will still need to pay those dividends 
um, until they got the, they were current again. So the cumulative the cumulative aspect is another advantage that's built in for investors and potential preference shareholders. Okay. So I mean it's not and, and it's not just a quarter for 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 example sake, right? If it's for any extended period, the point is that exactly what the OTO is going to be paid at, at the earliest point that the company is able to pay it essentially. Yes, exactly. Exactly. Okay. All right. Uh, so since we are talking about um, the offer in this case, is there a minimum to apply? Um, if for, for persons, we notice that there are two two tranches. So there's a USD portion, there's a JMD portion. Do you need a USD account to buy the US shares? Do you need, can you can you use, for example, a JMD account to buy both? Can you speak to us a little bit about those, those options? So let me speak from a JMD perspective. Uh, for the US dollar portion, yes, you need a US dollar account. The account is a US dollar equity money market account, okay. which we refer to as an M account, that you need to buy the shares in. Uh, this account is built to be able to hold US dollar assets. Uh, um, same for the Jamaican dollar, you, you need a Jamaican dollar account. We're doing it through our online money line system. So investors that may be anywhere in the world at this time, if you have a JMB money line account, you can participate in the offering. And in terms of the minimum, I think that was one of the questions you were asking earlier. Yes. It is uh, 500 US um, is a minimum purchase for the US dollar tranche and $100,000 $100, Jamaican for the Jamaican dollar tranche. Okay, okay, great. Uh, there's a question here. Um, will PBS be trading on the Barbados Stock Exchange? So the listing will, uh, there will be a listing of the preferences on the Barbados Stock Exchange. That is accurate. Okay, okay, great. Um, yes, PBS uh, is, um, is listed in, in, in the Barbados Stock Exchange and the Jamaica Stock Exchange. Yes, yes. I'm just going through the questions here as quick as I can. Uh, Elaine is asking, does the company have interest in buying back some of the shares instead of calling back the shares in the future? Um, I would say that that's always a possibility just by virtue of the fact that similar to uh, you know, any public company that has equity, uh, common equity, they do have the ability to repurchase the shares on the market. Um, so it is a possibility. I can't speak for PBS's management and strategy if that's something that they would be looking to do. But uh, knowing the team, it's something that if it is, if there is a, a potential strategic benefit to uh, preference shareholders um, and shareholders is something that they would likely consider. But I do believe, uh, to, to be more straightforward, I do believe that the company is in growth mode at this time. They're looking for acquisitions. This, this uh, Part of this uh, funding is to be able to facilitate acquisitions that some they have, they have, they have already identified or others that they're looking at. Uh, they believe this is an opportune time for the industry and for the company itself to be able to grow. You'd have heard Pedro earlier speak about where he wants to see the company um, be in terms of revenues. I, I, I suspect he is being modest and conservative, um, like Pedro. Uh, mm -hmm. but, but yeah, the company believes that this is a time for a tech company to be able to grow. And so I believe their focus is going to be far more towards looking for ways to deploy um, this cash into, into buying um, other companies and taking it in with, with under the PBS umbrella. And, and, and one could say based on the number of shares really currently outstanding, there's not really a lot compared to me, but some of the other companies listed, I mean, 186 million shares is not a lot of shares when you compare to other types of com um, other shares outstanding for some of the other companies we see on the main market, but I agree with you there. 
So uh, Natalia is asking, is there, a, is there a maximum amount of times for the year that the company is allowed to miss a payment um, if, if the situation arises? I, I think we kind of answered this before. I really, I mean, I don't think, well, not to speak for you, <laughs> for you both, but if it, is, um, if it is that there has to be a circumstances where the date is missed, it's gonna be paid as early as possible. And it's not something that you can foresee. That's how it goes, right? Correct, that is yeah. correct. Yeah, okay. All right, so Shellan is asking, what about Guyana? Is this going to be available on in in, in Guyana? Is there a JMB location in, in Guyana, by the way? Um, I don't believe that we have a location, a physical location. Um, However, again, because, because we do have the ability to um, accept orders by our money line system, it's, it's something that an investor in Ghana could look into opening an account in Jamaica uh, and perhaps participating in that way. Okay. And this question from Chipmunk Financials, do you think there is enough shares for the stock to be liquid enough? Uh, that really depends on the preference shareholders. Um, in terms of units, it can be. What we've seen in the past, realistically, this is, this is not a type of offering that has been done in a while. What we've seen in the past, uh, for example, I do believe JPS had a, had a perpetual preference share. Um, there has been demand to buy the shares on the market, so after listing, but many of the holders of the perpetual preference shares didn't want to sell. Um, I, I seem to re recall there was a bid on the exchange for like a year um, or more um, for persons trying to buy the shares and yeah. none of the persons that own the shares <laughs> were willing yeah. to sell, um, mainly because, so especially depending on where interest rates are, if a, if a holder sells the shares, um, it's very difficult to get back an asset that yes. is repaying this kind of rate of return. Yeah. And, and it speaks to why you would buy a preference share in the first place. It's not something that you purchase to trade. There may be opportunities to trade, but it's not going to be the first thing that you look to do. So that it, it's not really meant for those purposes. It's for those who want to get income. So you purchase, you you buy it to hold it, get the income from it, and then when it when it's when it's called, then you maybe move to a similar offer, right? That's that's kind of the point of of preference shares here. All right. Um, I think Natalia is giving us some more insight as to why she asked the question. Um, she's saying I would not want to go a year without getting any payments, even if they will all be made the following year. Um, okay, so she's saying that. For example, knowing that you're only allowed to miss a certain amount of payments would be attractive to her. I'm not sure if that's something that maybe the prospector speaks to. Is it so? So let's say that you have to miss a payment for any reason. Will an announcement be made with maybe a, a maybe a, 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 an, an an intent to pay by a certain date? Is that something that that you can speak to now? Well. well let me no, oh, sorry, Pedro, you go ahead. Well, you know, we have had um, bonds, payments, and uh, preferred shares payments, uh, some uh, quarterly, some semi-annually. And I can take a lot of pride that from the history in the past, we have been on the mark. And in COVID, we went on the mark and um, I think uh, we want to to grow and we want to have investors backing us we really have to be watchful and mindful about our obligations future obligations and I see that that's um, uh, that's more, more super important because our credibility is a stake on this especially if we want to do further um, emissions in the future. So this is something that we take very seriously. Okay. Okay. 
So I, 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 this is it's this this question is interesting to me because it's something that we're talking about in our in our Telegram group earlier. That for some investors, they're looking for maybe some form of guarantee in investing, and that's something that you just can't do because you don't know what the future holds. Yeah, as much as you're able to control it, you do the best you can, but you know it's just something that it's 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 you don't know the future. So. Um, Curtis is saying, do, do you think it's likely that there'll be an early redemption? Let, eh, oh. You want to respond that one? <laughs> um, so I'll, I'll, if I can take Kurt's question from an analyst, analyst view, um, former analyst, uh, it, it goes back to the the earlier earlier response in that um, PBS is looking to grow um, based on all of their projections they have just begun they're looking for opportunities to grow this is a great time for them to grow um, I, I I expect to see in all honesty uh, touching on one of the prior questions as well additional income generation from the company to be able to uh, cover all of their all of their you know expenses and liabilities and growth potential because the way that this preference share is built to protect uh, preference shareholders is that PBS um, first has to pay out any cumulative preference share dividends owing before they can pay dividends they can pay dividends to common shareholders. Mm -hmm. So it's a built-in protection. If you take a look at the shareholding of common equity, you'll see that it is actually pretty close to held as PBS the company um, yes. between you know two very large institutions who primarily are looking to the company for growth and dividends. So with regards to an early redemption, um, uh, an early redemption is impossible before 15 years, to be specific, to be specific and answer that question. Um, an early potential buyback of shares we also see as being unlikely. Um, not speaking for the company, just you know, speaking as a as an opinion of the arranger. Um, okay. But we we personally believe that. This is a good time for the company, and we expect great things from them. Okay, thank you. All right, so very final question for you, Doyle. If persons need support or they have questions, how can they contact JMB to, to, to find out either answers to their questions or get support for, for application? Well, JMB has a fantastic client care um, service that uh, persons can call if they have questions but in all honesty um the the way that this is set up in terms of the money line system it is pretty much if you have funds in your account whether a j dollar account or a us dollar equity money market account it's uh it's, it's literally just opening money line um saying you want to buy a stock there's an ipo tab you hit the ipo tab um, PBS preference shares is there. You hit that button. You determine how much you, how many units you want to buy, um, and that's it. Yeah, yeah. We we actually demoed it when when we did the review yesterday. It is as simple as as Doyle is saying. So yeah. if you missed it, just go ahead and watch the video from yesterday, and we'll did, we we show you how to apply. So great all right thank you doyle i don't know if there are any final comments or thoughts doyle i'll ask you to go first so we can close out with with pedro afterwards are there any final comments anything that you think investors may need to be aware of etc how is the time pedro let's you go first and i'll add it if there's anything for me i want to thank you for the opportunity to explain our project to speak about our company and uh I want to close by saying that PBS is about its people. It's about retaining talent. It's about grooming talent. It's about the promotion from within. And we have employees that have more than 35 years working for our company, as well as we are always 
um, hiring new, new new people uh, for our various uh, opportunities that we have. It's a great place to work. It's a great place to have a career. And uh, I invite not only uh, investors, but I also the human uh, capital around the region to look at PBS as a popul as a possible place to go and work. Great. Thank you. That, that's, that's something that our, our community looks to, to try and find opportunities for as well. There are a lot of persons who are actually in IT or, or, or in technology in the group. I do have an IT background as well, so I'm sure they're happy to hear that. Doyle, any final comments from, from you? Just some high level um, details on the offer. Um, it is It pays an annual dividend of 9.25%. Uh, on the US dollars and the 10.5% on Jamaican dollars. Uh, dividends are paid quarterly um, and the offer officially opens tomorrow. You can access it via Jimmy Moneyline system or via our selling agent, which is Barito, Barito's boss online uh, system. Okay, great, thank you. And as usual, our, our community members are welcome to join us on Telegram, ask us any questions about the offer, Would send us an email, anything that, that, that you need, just reach out to us. Our, our DMs are always open. I want to thank you both so much for being here. Really, really enjoy this conversation, Pedro. So I would like to reach out to you again at some point, asking you to join us again. Thank you to your team that joined us from, from all over the Caribbean. Thank you to everybody who joined us here tonight. Thank you so much. I really do hope you enjoy the rest of the evening. Thank you very much. Right. Okay, so let me take that question that Wayne asked <laughs> since it wasn't related to, 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 to PBS. So Wayne is asking about, about the teacher pool for one-on-one. -on -one. So um, if she was a JTA member as at the point that the prospectus was released, you just you just need, I, I think this is something that you could speak to. Um, I don't know if you're in our Telegram group, Wayne, but send me a message. I'll try to connect you with, with, with Ricardo to see if he can assist, okay? Hopefully that helps. Um, great. <laughs> thank you, thank you, Natalia. Thank you for everybody for being here. I really, really enjoyed this session. It was really fun talking with, with Pedro. Guys, we have a lot of great content coming up for you. So I hope that you have subscribed, like the video. It helps us out a great deal. We do have an investment class coming up on September 3rd. The link is under the, the, the video that you're watching here to sign up for the class. It's in our link tree. So that's on September 3rd. More details will follow. Uh, Wayne D, the Telegram link is in, in the description. There's a section that says join our communities. Just click on that link and you'll see the Telegram group link there. All right, everyone, enjoy the rest of your evening. I will see you in the next video. Learning is the key to successful investing. And who doesn't want to invest in some way? Here at Learn, Grow, Invest, we focus on financial education, all with the aim of sharing our knowledge on personal finance, investing, and building wealth. We do this on the foundation of our faith in God. If a more holistic approach is what you need, check out our Grow Faith-Based Financial Coaching Program. Find out more about us at learngrowinvestclub.com and follow us on all social media platforms at Learn, Grow, Invest.